Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices in accordance to His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi Hafadullah. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sheikhna, today's discussion, I want to discuss with you uh, congregational prayer, jama'ah. What is the Sayyid's opinion in regards to congregational prayer? Um, is it mustahab? Is it mubah? Is it wajib? Inshallah. A'udhu billah as-sami'an alim min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala alameen. It is mustahab for the individual, for the mu'min and the mu'minah to perform their daily salah, the wajib salah in jama'ah, congregation. And that's of course there are narrations with this regard that the one should, uh, if he's able to go to the mosque or to the gathering and uh, offer the salah in jama'ah. And the emphasis on the jama'ah is for the salat al-fajr, the morning, as the Sayyid mentions, and maghrib and isha. These are the main and most emphasized on that the one prays uh, at least these three sessions. And of course, for those who are the neighbor of the mosque, and I've mentioned the previous seasons that, and I brought the hadith, that uh, the one who prays um, next to the mosque in his house, and he doesn't go to the mosque, his rewards for the salah is less, is, is lessened, and um, the, the better to go to the mosque, which is nearby, and, and offer the salah there. And also the Sayyid mentions the one who hears the adhan of the mosque, nearby mosque. So those two groups more encouraged to go and pray in jama'ah in the mosque uh, in which in their na- neighborhood. I think it's also mentioned that it's 40 houses in every direction, isn't it? They, mm, yes. they should come and congregate at the mosque. And that is mainly the community of the masjid. Um, Shaykhna, what happens if I've already prayed salah? I've prayed my dhuhr asr. I've, I've come into the mosque and there's a jama'ah going on. Um, can, am I allowed to join it? Yes, of course. I mean, if you already prayed at home and you came to the mosque and you found some uh, praying in jama'ah, you can again uh, pray the salah, the same salah you prayed already, you prayed in jama'ah again. Or even if, let's say, you and the imam were in the mosque only and you both prayed separately, um, uh, individually, you know, the salah without the jama'ah, you can both again join together and repeat the salah you prayed already individually in jama'ah. That's fine. MashaAllah. And why do you think there's um, so much encouragement in regards to uh, jama'ah salah? I mean, is, is, is there, what are the rewards of, of, of you know, praying in congregation? Well, there's a narration with this regard, as I've mentioned, about the rewards of the one who prays in jama'ah. And um, for every rak'ah in the hadith says that for every rak'ah, not of every salah, every rak'ah, every segment of the salah, the rak'ah itself, which has, for example, alhamd and surah, ruku' and sujood, yes. uh, carries the reward and the thawab of 150 salah. MashaAllah. If the one prays with the jama'ah. And that's, of course, the one who prays with one one person, one person with the imam. Now if if there are two people gather and pray jama'ah, the hadith says that for every rak'ah of their salah carries the reward of 600 salah. Wow. SubhanAllah, 600. So as the number increases, the reward will increase too. SubhanAllah. Until the hadith says that if their number exceeds 10, it's more than 10. Yes. The hadith says that if all the skies were sheets, let's, pa- let's say paper, and the seas were ink, and the trees were pens, and the jinn and the ins, and the angels were the writers writing the thawab, 
they would not be able to write the reward of one rak'ah of their salah if it exceeded ten. That's just one rak'ah. Exactly. So imagine the greatness and for such jama'ah prayer that we usually miss. MashaAllah, Shaykhna. <coughs> so, I mean, if, if that is the thawab, you would encourage people <coughs> to, you know, do jama'ah as much as possible, wajib. Uh, what about the mustahab prayers and the nafila? Uh, can we gain the same rewards for those prayers as well by doing congregation? For the salah mustahab, we cannot pray at all in jama'ah. For the nafila, they're only done individually. You cannot pray the nafila, nafila to subh nafila to Maghrib, Isha, Dhuhr, Asr, um, as Jama'ah. You pray them separately. Salatul Layl, Namaz Shab. You cannot pray it um, in Jama'ah. These are done individually. And of course, uh, what has been done and innovated by the other sect of the Muslims in which they pray Taraweeh, for example, that's innovation. That wasn't in, in the time of the Prophet. Sallallahu he never prayed mustahab salah in jama'ah. And they innovated this afterwards um, when some of those um, so-called caliphs came and they innovated this new way of praying, sadly. But in, in all, uh, we don't have such a thing. The exception is in the Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha that we pray jama'ah, yes. which are mustahab. Because they were originally, they were muhajib in the time of the imam. Mm -hmm. of that time of the Ma'asum alayhi salam. But now because we have uh, an Imam who is not with us, then we can pray it, but as mustahab, of course, in Jama'ah. Eid al-Fatr, Salat al-Eid, and Salat Eid al-Adha. These two are the ex ex exceptions. And of course you have the Salat of Istisqa, where you go in the middle of the desert and you pray for, rain. for, mm -hmm. for the rainfall. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we cannot pray uh, any other Salah mustahab in jama'ah. Ascent. Sheikh, I mean, sometimes in congregation, um, in the jama'ah, there's just so many people. I've seen even the, you know, the, the, the lines going outside of the mosque and so forth and so much. I mean, is this allowed? Are we still allowed to join the jama'ah that way? Are we still going to get the rewards and the thawab? What is important in Salat al-Jama'ah is that you must have that person who links between this row and this row and the next row. So the front row and the back row, in the middle there should be something. There shouldn't be a barrier, a wall for example, or, or a closed door. If they reach the main entrance and the doors are open and there's somebody on the door praying, then you can join him, although you're outside of the mosque or outside of the, uh, of the prayer hall, you still can pray by joining them and praying behind that individual who is standing on the doorstep of uh, the, the main entrance inside. And you just join him behind him and you pray. And whoever is on your left or right who doesn't see the, the jama'ah or the imam or the prayers, they also can, um, based on your being there as a link, their sal salah will be accepted. That's fine. Ascent, Shaykh, mashallah. Okay. It seems as if that, you know, you can keep <coughs> connecting and you can probably go all the way into the car park. Um, Sheikh, is there a ruling in regards to uh, height, uh, as in if you're praying on a slope um, or on a hill, um, is there any rulings in regards to a jama'ah uh, on, on, on such a situation or such an area? The Sayyid here mentions that um, the, the prayer leader or the Imam of the jama'ah, when he stands for the salah, um, his position must not be more than a span of, of the hand which is about 20 centimeter higher than the others who stand. So let's say um, if the jama'ah are on the floor and he goes up, let's say, 5 centimeters, that's fine. But up to 20 centimeters or a span of a hand. And um, in this case, he cannot go up more than this limited uh, given um, measurement. Otherwise, the salah will not be accepted. So you have to make sure you don't go up as imam or leader of the salah over the uh, limited uh, given. So the sujood <coughs> has to be 
within a certain limit. <coughs> I mean, I've seen in Iran, we see sometimes the Mu'ammameen, they, they have these stairs that go down and they're, they're lower than the, the rest of the Jama'a. Do you think that's why it's, it's there, so that they don't do the sujood higher than anyone behind them? No, we have something called mihrab, in which the, pla the place in which you do worship there. So it's lower than the jama'ah. That's yeah. fine, but the question was about if it's higher than the jama'ah. Going up for the imam is, is an issue. Yes. Down is fine, but to go up, that's the main issue that shouldn't exceed um, 20 centimeters or a span of hand. I said. Sheikh, what about, we, we always you know, bring children into the mosque. We encourage our children to pray salah. Uh, sometimes we get them involved in the congregation as well, in, in the jama'ah. Does the link remain with, 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 in, in terms of children being there? Are we allowed to, you know, am I allowed to join the jama'ah if there's a child in front of me? And am, is my salah still accepted? Well, that child is not reaching the age of adolescence. He's still a child in which the salah is not wajib on him. But let's say... He used to pray at home and he wants to join the jama'ah as well to get the blessings. And in overall, some ulama say that the salah of the child is also accepted, you know, it's rewarded. His parents are, are rewarded as well. They would accept the salah of the child. And um, in this case, the said said, yes, if, the, if you don't know about um, the way he performed the wudu, for example, the way he prayed, you don't know if it's battle or not battle. That's fine. Sheikhna, I, I was taught that there's rules in regard to praying in Jama'ah when it comes to the leader and you're not allowed to you know, go ahead in terms of the Salah. So if the, the Imam of the Jama'ah is you know, in Ruku, I'm not allowed to go into Sujood. Um, what about if there's like people in front of me? Let's take Takbir, for example. Takbir al -Ihram. Um, the, the, the Imam of the Jama'ah has said it. But I'm in the third row and the people in front of me haven't done it. So do I have to wait for them or can I do the takbir and, and, and start my salah? If the first row is almost about to start the salah, they haven't said Allahu Akbar, the takbir first, in the first place. But they're about to say it. The second and the third row, they are allowed to start. That's fine. Because they're about to start, the first row is about to start the Salah. So you can say Allahu Akbar before them, before the first row and the first line of the Salah. That's fine, there's no issue with it. As long as they are uh, ready to, to start the prayer. They're not sitting, for example, doing Tasbih. Because the first row is the main link between the Imam and the Jama'ah behind. The first row must also be uh, initiated properly so the rest could follow. So that's fine, as, as long as they're going to start uh, the takbirah, you can start before them, it's fine. Sheikhna, what are the rules in regards to having uh, an, an imam of, of a jama'ah? And I mean, we always hear that they have to be righteous and they can't sin in public. What if I'm not sure about this person um, and, and if he's fit to uh, lead the congregation? Well, if this imam possesses um, a good personal character and you have some kind of assurance that he's a good person now and he's of course he's just Adil now to get this uh, assurance either you ask those who are in the Jama'ah ah, that you know them your friends colleagues whoever prays behind this Imam and they will tell you that yes we pray we know him he's a good person a just person a pious for example then you pray. Or you might yourself know the Imam Jama'ah. Roughly you know him, that he's a pious person, you know, he's, he's mutaqi, he doesn't do any sins and so forth. Then that's it, you just, just follow the Jama'ah. There's no issue with it. As long as you have uh, gained the information and the assurance that this individual is just and righteous, that's fine. What happens if I find out later on that, oh no, this person wasn't just and righteous? Um, or let's say um, the, uh, the, the Imam of the Jama'ah, he didn't have wudu. And later on he said, oh, sorry, I've made a mistake. I didn't have wudu. Is our salah batil or do we have to repeat the salah? If you discover later that the 
Imam Jama'a's salah was batil, for example, or was wrong, or didn't meet the conditions. But you prayed it correctly as a follower of the Jama'a, as a ma'mum. Then your salah is valid, valid and correct. There's no issue with it. He needs to repeat, but not I as a follower of the Imam. So for myself, I did it in the right way. I don't have to be worried, worry about repeating the salah again. Sheikha, what about when I, I'm in the Jama'ah and for, for whatever reason I want to pray individually, I don't want to continue with the Jama'ah. Can I change my knee and can I opt out to, be, do, can I opt out to do Farada? Or uh, do I have to start from the beginning? You're allowed to actually um, leave the Jama'ah. So let's say the Imam is reading Hamd and Surah and he finished the Surah, he is about to go to the Ruku'ah. You can make the intention that you're going to leave the Imam from now on and pray individually, Farada. So you, st you go to the Ruku'ah uh, individually, sujood individually, and you just leave the Salah as a Farada individual. That's, that's fine, you can. However, if it was in the middle of the Hamdan Surah and you were quiet because you have to listen to the Imam's Hamdan Surah, if you made the intention of leaving, you must continue the rest of the Hamdan Surah. You read them. You read the rest uh, by yourself, Farada, and you complete the Salah. And of course, you cannot go back to the Jama'ah after making the decision and the intention of uh, going alone mm -hmm. and uh, Farada. You can't go back to the Jama'ah. So you have to complete the Salah as a Farada individually. Ahsan. Shaykhna, when is the best time to actually join the Jama'ah? We always see it, we're all there getting ready to prepare for Salah The Adhan happens, we all stand up, the Aqama happens, we all stand up, we're getting ready to pray We've entered the Salah um, And then, you know, we're, 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 we're listening to the Imam every recite Surah Alhamd We're going to Ruku and you're always going to hear Salah Ya Allah, Ya Allah <laughs> When is the best time, or when is the, the, the last time we can join the Salah? What Raqqa do we join in? If, if it's the you know the second raqa. Do we do we act as if it is our second as well, or should we act, uh, should we do those things which are uh, prescribed in the first raqa and so forth? If you join the salah a bit late, and the imam is about to go to the ruku' or he is in the ruku', then you just make the intention of, of whatever the salah is, and straight you go to the ruku' by saying Allahu Akbar takbir al haram and then the takbira, the second takbira to go to the Rukur and you join the Jama'ah uh, straight away so you join the Rukur however if you miss the Rukur and let's say you, say you said Allahu Akbar and you went to the Rukur but the Imam stood up in this case you have to as a precaution repeat your Salah because now you didn't catch with the Imam uh, in this case you have to um, repeat the Salah again as a precaution of course and of course, um, you can actually wait for the Imam till he, uh, let's say, if you don't catch the Imam in, in, in the Rukur, you can wait for him for the next Raka'ah. So you wait, he stands up after the first Raka'ah, for example, you catch the Imam in the second Raka'ah, that's fine. And you do all the acts that he does. Um, even the qunut, you do the qunut as well with him, for example. Although it's your first rak'ah, but you do all the acts. Ahsan, thank you very much, Shaykhna. That's all we've got time for. Inshallah, we'll be discussing more on congregation, inshallah, on next episode. Until then, make sure you pray and make sure you pray in congregation because it's a lot more thawab. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.